Welcome to a subplot short. Hi everybody, we just released a new episode of The Subplot with New York Times bestselling author and star of the new Netflix show Insatiable, Sarah Colonna. Sarah and I know each other from back on the Chelsea Lately days where she was a round table regular and a writer on the show. In this short, Sarah and I talk about an audition that she had for the Montreal Comedy Festival early in her career that didn't go so well, how she was able to get over that, and how sometimes the opportunities that you miss are just as important as the opportunities that you get. Oh shit, why can't I think of the name of it? Gersh. It was Gersh, yeah. yeah. Nailed it. Okay. I was so excited. And they um, put me on a showcase for, Mont like for Montreal, which right. is a big comedy festival, and it used to be even bigger than it is now. I it, think. Out of it, you could you could get a development deal that they would give you a couple hundred thousand yeah. bucks. And, and now it's more like people go to see like the big comedians already, right. or they're still up and coming, but it doesn't get the same, I don't think. But, um, I mean, it's still a great festival, but I don't think it has... There's not the same amount of deals coming out. Right. Yeah. So, they put me in front of the Montreal Comedy Festival when um, Drew Carey was doing his Wednesday nights at the Improv. Which like, was, he was a, the big... The big deal. It was like he would headline the Improv on Wednesday nights. And he would do... Was that, he was basically doing it with Ryan Styles and everyone from yeah. Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah. So they would do stand-up and then they would have the big Whose Line Is It Anyway cast doing... And for those of you who don't know what Whose Line Is It Anyway, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> Google it. I'm too young. Um, so they put me up to do a 15 minute set, which I didn't know about. At this time I had like 10 solid minutes. They didn't tell me it was 15 minutes. They were like, they just kind of were like, oh, she does stand up. Put her up in front of Montreal for this like big part, you know, this big thing to do there. And um, they put me up right before Drew Carey's show. So there's an entire audience of people wanting to see Drew Carey and this whole big thing. And, uh, and up fucking comes me with a dick joke, you know? Yeah. And it was awful. Like I completely bombed. Uh, they, people just stared at me. I got. It was the first time that had happened. Like I'd been used to doing pretty well, and right. like I didn't know how to finesse a crowd when it didn't go well at that time. Right. So I completely ate shit, and I got off stage in ten minutes because that's all I had. Right. And the the host wasn't even in the room because he oh. thought I was doing fifteen minutes, and I didn't know that either. So I just <laughs> left the stage and I left it completely empty, and then I went in the bathroom and I cried. <laughs> Awful. I wish yeah. I found out. I wish I could find out who hosted that night so I could be like, I'm so sorry <laughs> that I did that to you. It so, was awful. And, and so you're only a couple years in at this point. Too. Yeah. So you'd gotten, you know, kind of a, a My timeline is really bad. So I probably did, started doing stand up in like 95, and this was pro I mean, no, that's not. No, I moved here in 1996. Okay. So I'm fucking everything up because I went to college in 92 to 96. I'm okay. getting old. And um, so I probably just started doing stand up around 90. Yeah, like 97 so, when okay. I moved up here from yeah. Orange County. And then, so whatever, 98, 99, mm, this is... This is in the yeah. first couple of years. Yeah, this is in the first couple of years. And so, I mean, at that point, like, getting Maybe that kind of... Maybe premium blood in 2000. Maybe. All right. That, but it was, that it was in the first right. couple of years. I mean, yeah. so that must have been exciting for you on, on the one hand because you're like, holy shit, like, I'm getting all of this buzz. I haven't been doing it for that long. Or, like... Because I remember when I did stand up and I stopped doing it because for, for a number of reasons, but like, I was like, I was like, I'm going to give myself like three years and if I'm not like huge, like I'm out. And it's just yeah. like, you know, I was really impatient at that time. Um, and I'm just curious, like, what was your kind of view on it? Did you just, did you think it was going to happen that quickly for you? Were you surprised? Were you like, oh, I totally deserve this? And like, I was surprised, but yeah. I thought like, okay, I've been working hard and this yeah. is, but I wasn't, um, there's John. Sorry, everybody about the buzzing. It's Hi, John. Good. Hi, John. Um, so I was, um, yeah, I wasn't sure. Like, I knew that I'd been working hard, so it felt like, but it didn't, I didn't really know the process of it anyway. Right. So I just was sort of, I mean, ignorance is bliss. Like, I was just stumbling through it, literally. I was just like, I don't know, this is okay. So I've been doing showcases, and I've been, you know, to meet, to, like, at that time, I felt like the most productive thing you could do, you know, during the day was, like, send your headshots to people or invite people, agents out to see you if you were doing... Right. A shitty stand-up set somewhere. So like, you were hustling. I was yeah. trying, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, I was excited, but I don't think I knew really. I definitely didn't know, and I wasn't a good enough stand-up to be put in the position I was in. And that, I think that's kind of a, a really interesting, important point, too, because listening to a lot of stand-up interviews and people that do stand-up, it's like, you don't really, 
know who you are until you've been doing stand up for five years, 10 years, you know, people yeah. have different numbers and stuff, but it's like, you're really finding your voice in those first couple of years. And so, um, I'm interested in how, like, how did you recover from that, like, from that, that showcase? I when... still haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one took a while, I have to admit. I was like, I was, I was, I was down after that because I went in the bathroom and cried and then I didn't, I wait, I made my agent, like, I didn't look for him in the lobby. I waited until everyone was gone before I came out and then he emailed me the next day and he was like, so that didn't go great, but whatever. Like, they don't, they're more used to that stuff than, yeah. I was too young and too new to it to understand, like. That to me, I was like, so that's all. I, my, I my over. Yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. terrible. And yeah. like, um, but had I been, I wish I'd have known, if I'd have known better at the time, I would have said, I'm not, don't put me up on a Wednesday night at the improv before Drew Carey. I'm not ready for it. Right. But you don't know. You're just like, oh, you guys think I'm ready? Cool. Yeah. And they don't know. They're basing it off of like, oh, we've, you, we've heard some heat about you. We think you're funny. So right. let's just get you to Montreal. And you're like, oh. I don't think I'm, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, yeah. the cool thing is whatever in, uh, 2013 or whatever, like 13 years later, I went to Montreal as one of the 10 comics to watch on, you know, that variety right, puts out this thing every yeah. year. And, um, so, you know, you eventually think comes full circle. Yeah. And I, and like that, the year before that, 2012, when my first book came out, I sold out the improv for two shows on a Friday night. And I right. was like, Okay, like... I can let that go comes, now. Yeah, I can let it go. It took that long now. It took 12 years. Definitely. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to The Subplot wherever you listen to podcasts. And also on YouTube, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, all those things, slash Jesse Shapiro. Hope you have a great day. See, I never thought I'd get the chance to do some things.